What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Someone left a comment on my last video that I should do a video on how to be a freelancer in 2019. What sort of dev skills you need to know to be able to do that for front end development. And I was like, you know what, that's actually a pretty good idea. But the thing with freelancing in general is that it all stems from brand. So I want you to watch this clip from Gary Vee real quick, which talks about how brand is everything and how if you have that, you avoid the bottleneck of having to find clients and all that stuff. So just watch this real quick and we'll dive right in. And the reason I want you to build a media brand around you is no technology, not Alexa, not Facebook, not anything that gets invented that we don't know exists now. None of that builds or beats brand because they're not gonna ask Alexa for let me service my pool or who should I go with. They're gonna say, I wanna go with David, call David and fix my pool, and that's called brand. And there's a very big difference, my friends, between brand and sales. And 90% of people are in the sales business. I just wanna make a real quick mention that everything in this video could be its own topic, but I'll try to give you the quick and easy rundown of what it takes to be a freelancer in 2019. So why do you have to build a brand? Well, building a brand and having a reputation is everything. Branding is the bottleneck. Pretty much. If you don't have a brand, if you don't have a reputation, if you don't have something that people can know you by work that you've done, a history besides recommendation letters and word of mouth, then that's the bottleneck. Now you can pay marketing agencies to get your stuff out there, but if you have your own brand, you already have eyes on your products and then you can point those eyes to another product. Building your brand is the number one thing that you can do. Even if you're applying to a job or something, you have a history of things that you've worked on. You've documented your struggles, you've documented your successes, you've documented the things that you've worked on, where someone else applying to a job, they just have a resume and a cover letter. You have a resume, a cover letter, a history, and a whole log of everything that you've been doing and keeping track of, which gives you a story, gives you that extra edge. They can relate to you more. You're not just a paper on the top of the stack, because that's, that's, that's where it'll be if you have a brand. It doesn't matter how great you are, it doesn't matter how great your projects are, it's, if, if no one can see them, if no one knows who you are, it, it doesn't matter, it's, the, it's like Twitter. Twitter's actually not very profitable as a company, but Twitter has access to so many people's emails and users that if they decide to push an ad into everyone's Twitter inbox, they could probably make a whole lot of money, right? So Twitter has distribution, which is what you want. That's why brand is so important. Okay, so how do you, how do you start building a brand then, right? Well, get active everywhere. Every social media platform, don't consume the platform. Don't use the platform to consume it. Right, because then you can get lost and distracted and it, they say if the if the platform is free then you're the product that they're selling pretty much right so they're selling your data they're gathering information about you right don't consume the social media sites just use them to promote your products your projects that you've worked on history so for example if you're like a ui ux person you better have projects on dribble you you better find a way to get an invitation to dribble it's invite only you better have uh, projects on behance your project should be everywhere. You should be posting your products on Instagram and UI UX tag or something crazy, right? You just need to have a brand. People need to know who you are. Uh, it's just, that's just how it is. You need to get active everywhere. If you don't like making videos or talking to a camera, I'm sorry that that's where the future's going. Blogs and written content are still kind of relevant, but not, not so much as time goes on. Video is so much easier to scroll through and just look at, and then when you're done, just keep scrolling. So get active everywhere on every social media account. Facebook, LinkedIn is good for business, Instagram for design and visual visual things like that. And again, we're doing front-end development, so if you worked on a cool front-end application, I'm gonna show that stuff off on Instagram. One more thing while I'm paused right here is I wanted to mention the best way to create a brand is to start providing value to people. You wanna start taking your knowledge and giving that to other people or giving people tips and hints and ways that people can improve their life. And the more that you can improve other people's lives, the more that your life will improve and usually the better off your brand grows. And so that's what Gary Vee would tell you. That's what I'm gonna tell you. Don't start off just like making vlogs or anything because no one, no one knows who you are. No one cares about you yet. You need to be providing helpful, valuable content right up front and then in return, people will give you their attention and their trust and their loyalty and, and that's basically how you build a brand. So if you're gonna make a blog or a video, try to provide some hints and tips of what you struggled with, how you overcame those struggles, something that you learned, something that you think would help other people debug a piece of code or something like that, something in your project that you learned or you could share at some point that would improve someone else's attempt at doing something similar.
Okay, back to this. Um, another thing that can back up your brand a little bit, these only go so far because no one knows these people, but if people write you a recommendation letter, uh, it kind of does a little bit for you, but not, not that much. As we're talking about a portfolio, that is your bread and butter as a freelancer, you need a portfolio, even if you're not a freelancer, just as a developer, that is your lifeblood. And if no one can see what you've done or what you can do, no one's gonna wanna see what you can do. All right, so what are the actual skills that you need, the actual programming skills? And I wish I could say JavaScript, React, CSS, HTML5, and Firebase, and you'll be good to go. But that's not, that doesn't answer the question. You have to ask the right question. Who are you going to be freelancing for and what type of applications are you gonna be making? Are you gonna be making full stack? applications? Or are you going to be doing static pages to update some restaurant's menu or something like that? What are you going to be making? And then you need to update your skills to reflect that. So if you're making full stack applications, I'd say you probably need to learn Angular or an MVC of some sort. If you're going to be making static pages, maybe do it with React for fun. I, I don't know. You could do it with just SAS and HTML and JavaScript if you if you really want it. It's not, that's not too bad. But there's so much more. There's so many auxiliary skills that you need as a freelancer that just having those alone won't get you the client to even get started, especially if they're giving full trust in you and design and, and everything, like I did with the deli down the road. All right, so you need auxiliary skills. You can't just be a developer and then suddenly be a freelancer. You need so much more. So let me tell you what other skills you might need as a freelancer. Digital marketing is huge. So if you come to a freelance client and you develop their app and you come to them and say, hey, I can market your app and get users onto your app. You do the development, you do the marketing, you do the design maybe, you learn some sketch, Photoshop, learn color theory, basic design principles, um, learn about the most modern design libraries. For example, material design by Google is really hot right now. But there's so much more like soft skills that you can bring to the table to really up that. Like, yeah, I can develop the develop the app and then give it back to you, but that, that doesn't cut it anymore. You also need to be possibly comfortable with outsourcing. Outsourcing has become huge. I don't know if you guys have ever read The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, but basically he outsourced his work to two people in India, and then he claimed it as his own, and he spent four hours a week handing off the work from India to his boss until he got caught and then he got fired and then he wrote his book and now he's famous. So, but actually outsourcing, <laughs> outsourcing can be good. Um, if you can't do something, for example, I interviewed Sam, he's a WordPress freelancer and he outsources some of his work. He outsources his design, he outsources some JavaScript development as needed, but he is the overall like proprietor of the project and he does most of the WordPress work, but the things that he can't do or that would take him forever so it's not cost efficient for him or the client, he just outsources. He just gives it to somebody else. And as much as people want to do everything themselves, it just doesn't make sense all the time. Just make sure you get, you know, good people that you're outsourcing to that are budget friendly and that do quality work. All right, so the next question is, how do you get your first clients as a freelancer? And as much as I'm always very against unpaid internships, I am very for doing projects for free for companies that need new stuff. Just at first, not forever, just at first, just to get your name on a few things that are real, that companies are using, and then you go to your third client, possible client, your third prospect, and you're like, hey, look at these other things that I've done. They don't know that you weren't paid for that. Just think of it as an unpaid internship or a project. That's like the cost of entry, pretty much. Just take your ticket, that's, that's the cost of entry to be a freelancer these days, unless you, you know, go. Everyone says go, go to your family and build your friends a website and, you know, build your friend. My friend is a photographer. My friend is an artist. She needs a website, but like no one actually goes there, so it doesn't really matter. They just want a site just so they can check that thing off the. Like that doesn't always work. You need to go to places, and ask if you can do things for free. Just make it look like you're not trying to scam them because if it's free and you're even if you try to start explaining, they'll probably hang up the phone or close the door or not respond to your email. So. There's a little bit of nuance there, which we'll talk about, but um, every time my girlfriend gets sick during the winter time, whenever she inevitably gets sick, she has a little cot that she unfolds in her office and she sleeps in here instead of in the bedroom. So she has like this little cot in her office. Okay, so the next topic is how do you charge clients? And I'm a big promoter of flat rate over hourly because hourly selling your time and it can kind of promote a little bit of distrust between you and the client because are you just working slow to build them more money? Like, are you sure you're late? Or are you just working slow and just billing us hours? And I, I'm not a huge fan of that, but you need to make sure that you get your money. And so what I always do is say, all right, half up front, half at the end, and that's fine. So that way you're not totally out and you check in halfway and they're like, yep, everything's good. Chances are you're gonna get that other half of money. But if you got bills writing on this, you can't just be like, all right, I'll, I'll do the project and you'll hopefully pay me at the end. That doesn't, don't do that, that's too risky. You're doing yourself a disservice 
charge at least 25% upfront, bare minimum. You need some sort of like leverage to be like, look, uh, I'm not, I'm not working with you anymore. In case they just like totally drop, then you, you're not totally boned. Hourly, like I said, don't do it. I'm not a huge fan of it. Don't sell your time. Uh, this is good for you because if you work really fast and get it done really fast and you charge 5,000 for a project, you get it done in a week, you just made $5,000 in a week. And if you take three weeks, as I was talking about yesterday, then the client doesn't end up paying you more because you're late. I mean, the project's still late, which is bad. I mean, they don't end up having to pay you more money because you've already agreed to the terms of service. So finally, let's talk about some of the websites that you can use to get a job. There's Upwork. Upwork is actually pretty good if you don't want to charge anything, but uh, you're going to get undercut pretty, pretty hard, especially for international clients. But if you want to get your foot in the door and you don't want to have to go out to these companies and like do cold walk-ins and cold calls and cold emails, if you want to skip that process, just go to Upwork and then just undercut everyone else and just basically be like, yeah, I'll do it for free, that's fine. Then boom, you, you got your first freelance project because who's going to say no to free? Fiverr. So Fiverr is pretty popular. It's, it, it started off with just like you pay $5 for some guy. Everyone remembers like the Fortnite guy um, and then his channel got removed off of Fiverr. Now he's famous on YouTube or whatever. But Fiverr is a good place to freelance and you can just start off with little things. Just be like, look, I'll build you a landing page for three dollars or something right as long as you get to control the design if they hit you with this super complex design and they're like yo can you make this it's like you know six seven windows worth of scrolling and then you're like yeah absolutely for three no i'm not doing that but you can start off for free i'll make landing pages for free i'll do this for free i'll do this for free and just put some services up there for free and i bet in no time you'll get clients coming to you uh what i did for some after effects stuff when i wanted to start learning video editing in the freelance world was i went to reddit and I went to the gaming subreddit and I was like, I wanna make you a lower thirds for any gaming YouTubers out there. The lower thirds is that little thing you see slide out in my videos every single time the video starts. Like I made that by hand, I did the animation, the colors switching and, and all that stuff. And I was like, I wanna make you one specifically for your channel at no cost. Um, just maybe put a little thank you note in there at the bottom. And now I can link to real YouTube channels that are using my lower thirds. I'd have to go find them, but there, there are some out there that are still using my lower thirds and I got spammed. And then people were like, I was like, yeah, I have like uh, 15 people do. He's like, look, I'll, if you do it right now, I've seen what you've done, I'll pay you like 20 bucks. So then boom, now all of a sudden, some guy wants to pay 20 bucks to skip the line of all the people I was making lower thirds for. All right, so you guys, like he looks, cute and fluffy and snuggly and he loves you know he loves scratches and stuff but like he wouldn't believe like how many times i have to vacuum like every week okay so let's talk about the last one which is what are some other ways to approach clients besides those two external third-party websites this is the order of operations that i would use when i would go to approach a client i would walk in those are the those are the greatest because it's you know it's most awkward for everyone involved, but it has the highest chance of a yes. And then after that, there's cold calling, which is also awkward for everyone involved, and there's an easy exit for the other person that you're prompting to. And then emailing, which is the worst because everyone just thinks that you're a scam. So let me tell you about the time where I cold called someone and I had to get creative here and think outside the box. I cold called someone and I was like, hey, I noticed that your website's a little bit outdated. It was just a static website for, for car repair, car mechanics. And I called them and I was like, hey, I think it would use some work. I'm a web developer, I'm currently trying to build my portfolio. I'm willing to do it for free. And they hung up on me before I could even like get to the details because I think they heard free and they were like, yeah, what does this guy want? This is a scam from... So I called them back with a different voice and I was like, hello, I'm a recent customer and I am just extraordinarily pleased with the work you've done on my car and I'd like to do something in return for you at no cost to you. You guys just did such an amazing... Uh, job on my sister's car and it's just really it's just really been amazing uh, for the price and I'd, I'd like to make you a website you know for free I think you could use a little work and for whatever reason that didn't click with them that uh, I had someone just called and <laughs> and asked them and offered them a website they're like oh really yeah yeah I think that we could actually so like I pretended that I was a customer so that I could get get a freelance project hey Oko can you tell them to like and subscribe I'd appreciate that well I guess that's it guys. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Let me know what special effect that you guys want to see in the next video. Flying is really hard to do and you guys keep asking for things that require a ginormous green screen. So try to keep it simple like wall climbing or telekinesis or something like that. But if you want to see a certain special effect, go ahead and leave that in the comments. I'm happy to see what you guys want. 
and I'll see you guys in the next video.